Well, first of all, thank you very much for having us. Uh, I know it's Friday afternoon and the many things you could be doing, so I really appreciate your time today to spend with us. My role is to uh, drive our Microsoft Cloud in the Southeast Asia and Emerging Markets region. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about what we're doing, uh, what is the cloud, how does that op operate. And it's exciting to see what they're doing. It's amazing demonstrations, amazing products and solutions. And I can see opportunities for really combining that talent with cloud technologies and really f finding a way to help Bangladesh drive uh, exports of ICT and products worldwide. It's a great opportunity and perfect timing. So just the Microsoft mission, you know, our mission is to empower organizations and people to achieve more. And as we look at that as a, as, as a mission that we have as an organization, um, we live in a really exciting time because we see the trends and how cloud computing will come together to enable that. And we passionately believe that by enabling our organizations, customers, partners um, to adopt and uh, leverage the cloud for their businesses, we'll be able to achieve this mission. One of the things that uh, we talk about is we're living through the, the next, uh, we're on the cusp of a industrial revolution. We've been through steam power. We've been through electricity and engines and what, that's, what that did for, the, uh, for society and, and industries worldwide. And then we live through the, the advent of the microchip. And most of you will be uh, having a phone with some kind of microchip in your pocket today. And that's transformed people's lives already. And now we're on the cusp of a, oh, I, I, a fourth change, a fourth uh, transformation, and, a, and a, a revolution with, we believe, cloud computing will be a key part of that, enabling uh, the way people work, the way organizations develop products, uh, how they can bring efficiencies and transform their business models, transform their businesses, and really enable uh, their businesses to, uh, to flourish. So when we look at what we have seen in the marketplace, and you know, our cloud operates in uh, over 180 countries now, and so we've seen that cloud momentum is there. Uh, the acceptance for uh, moving applications, moving, uh, um, you know, sort of all sorts of information, uh, leveraging cloud technologies, the cloud platform is starting to happen. From a cloud point of view, it's no question that it's, uh, it's, it's an enabler, a key enabler for disruption. If you look at the largest uh, startups in the world, almost all of them are building technologies or have solutions that leverage cloud technologies. There's an opportunity for us here in Bangladesh to do the same. And I can imagine the next unicorn startup coming from this country. If you look at some of the great solutions that we see in, uh, just outside this, uh, in, in the halls. Just to sort of uh, talk about what, where this will lead us next. Uh, our CEO, Satya Nadella, talks about uh, democratizing artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence means that we'll live in a world where computing and uh, capabilities like that will be almost transparent, but really there in everything that we touch and work with. So how does that come to life? It comes to life through platforms like the cloud that really enable those types of applications where devices, technology, um, it could be things, Internet of Things, we, we, we hear about a lot as well, really being able to be uh, leveraged in a way where the data, the signals, the, the noises that you hear can be analyzed, uh, can, can apply machine learning, uh, and some sort of bringing intelligence into applications in a way that allows humans to interface to systems and applications in a much more transparent and almost invisible way as well. And so you can see that the technology will be living all around us, and, it, and that's where we want to get to. And that will be a way that uh, allows you to really uh, disrupt uh, any existing business process in a way that um, allows organizations to really develop uh, a new way to think, a new way to bring information and technology together uh, that allows their businesses to, to really grow and develop. From an from a intelligence perspective, uh, we see intelligence coming into not just applications, but also systems and endpoints, um, having something that really listens to your needs, listens to your capabilities and understands individuals better, understands the scenario or the current situation, and really bringing that intelligence to life uh, in the way we, uh, in a way we have to sort of uh, uh, live as well. It's, as human beings, you know, we need ways, you know, 
improve ways in a global society to really connect with others, connect with information, connect with systems, wherever I may be in the world. I'm here today in Bangladesh, I'm traveling through the city. There's so many touch points that I have with systems and you know, cars, whether it's cars or whether it's hotels or whether it's this conference center, whether it's this uh, platform here, but technology will be pervasive throughout and allows us to really, and being able to bring that together is, is a way that will help me transform the way I live and work, um, the way I can be more efficient uh, in, in delivering my role. Um, but what is the cloud? You know, people talk about the cloud as it's this thing, and I just wanted to spend a little bit of time explaining what the cloud infrastructure is. Because I think it's important that we all sort of have a chance to see it, feel it, and understand that it's not something that is threatening, but it's something which is a great opportunity for us to really drive uh, a new way to exist, a new way to sort of develop our capabilities. And so in, with Microsoft, we have built over 100 data centers worldwide, and that's continuing every day. Every seven days, Microsoft builds a new data center. Uh, in some country, in somewhere in the world. And that continues to be, be, be a huge investment for us because we have bet the entire company on the cloud. Because we truly really believe this is, this, is the, this is the future for us. This is the future for our organization and all the software companies that we work with. And you've seen us partnering with companies like SAP or Adobe or Uber, where you've seen new organizations that are partnering with us, leveraging the cloud platforms for their businesses and turning them around and being very disruptive. The cloud infrastructure, all of these data centers are connected. One of the things that is not something we talk about very much, but Microsoft owns these data centers, but we also own the underlying dark fiber network that connects them together. So you've got the ability to really move data very fast around the world as you need it, and applications can, can really surface and be performant wherever the, wherever the end users may be. When you talk about cloud and cloud options, you know, every organization that I work with, every customer has started with some kind of IT, IT environment. They'll be running servers, they'll be running applications, either in their data centers, under the desk in some cases, or if working with hosters and, and, and third parties already. And so there's this mass migration that's starting to happen and starting to see. So the Microsoft's approach is to support private cloud, hybrid cloud, public cloud. And so your journey is something that you can define that allows you to really uh, take the journey at your pace, um, but, and, but, but, but also allows you to adopt the technologies uh, that you need for your applications. Certain scenarios in here. We have earthquake potential here, right? And I was talking to a customer yesterday. They have two data centers 30 miles apart, but in, an, in a situation of an earthquake, that's not going to help. So using the cloud as a third backup option is a great idea to start moving you know, data or applications that would be there as, a, as, a, as, a, as an option in that situation. That may be only there for critical applications or certain types of data, but it's a, it's a great option for them where the data center may be outside the country, but that's okay because it's secure, it's safe. We've got the ability to bring it up and get my data back in that kind of event. When Japan had that situation in Fukushima a few years back with an earthquake and quite a disastrous scenario in Tokyo, a lot of customers came to us and said, we really need this option to start moving data there. And so now operating this hybrid infrastructure for their organizations. You know, so they can be global businesses and be, uh, provide a great service back to their, uh, their customers as well. So on this chart, you'll see that the cloud options are there in terms of you know, fully on-premise, you can do today, and that's available, of course, uh, with the Microsoft platform, but you also have the ability to have an infrastructure service or a platform service or a fully managed software service like Office 365, where over the last seven years, I've been working there for, with Microsoft 15 years now, and we went through the whole shift of moving our core you know, business applications for productivity. Office is used worldwide by over a billion users. And it's, uh, it's come a long way from the old days of just you know, Word and Excel. Uh, it's now a collaboration suite and a communication suite. Uh, but by being in the cloud, it's allowed us to really, really understand our customers better and deliver a great capability in these applications that organizations can use to, to really uh, enhance their most important asset, which is people and making, getting people to be productive, having access, secure access in the right way, rights managed to the right information is super important. Uh, who uses search? Everybody uses search, but you know, there's so much information now. How do you find it? Wouldn't it be better if the office suite or the applications were smart enough to know what you need 
And rather than you searching, the information found you instead. And that's what's built into Office 365 now with Delve. If you look that up, Delve is a cool application that really uh, um, understands you as you work. And as you work, it also surfaces new doc documents that you know it knows that you will be interested in. And that's a great example of how you could use SaaS-based applications. Okay, so just to, just to be clear here, so the infrastructure would be something that any uh, business needs to put in place before you can run the application, before you can give it to your end users, before they can be productive. What's the fastest way to get there is really to have somebody take care of the infrastructure so you can focus on your businesses and the applications that you need. And so what the cloud does and the promise it delivers is really the ability to go fast, and time to market, speed to market, the ability to have the, uh, the latest innovations available to you at any time so you can build that into your applications. So the small companies can, be, can have access to the same technology that the large companies can have, and you can compete. And that's really key in this world today, to be able, the ability for a small business to come out and compete with the large organizations is absolutely possible. So I just want to show you a video here. louder than the music outside. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to, um, uh, you know, just highlight what that infrastructure looks like. Who's been to a Microsoft data center? Not many people. So you've got a glimpse there of what, what, what we built. This is a huge, you know, football, three, three, three football-sized buildings that really house millions of servers. And we're purchasing hundreds of thousands of servers every month to continue to build out our data centers. And so this infrastructure is available to anyone, whether you're a startup or a large business, and it's available now. Our, our, um, our customers are telling us, you know, go faster. Okay, so, we're, so we're building more. Um, and what's happening is organizations are now starting to really innovate because there's two pieces that you'll hear about maybe at this conference and many other conferences. There's a, there is a digital transformation happening. There's also a data center transformation happening. And so organizations, the one, the one thing to take back is how do I skill up? How do I skill myself to, to have cloud infrastructure skills, cloud architect skills, and cloud developer skills? So you can take advantage of all that infrastructure which we've built and brought to you at sort of uh, at, at mass scale. It also allows you to take your applications and grow globally. So if, we, if, you're, if you're a software company or if you're a bank and you want to move into new markets, how do you do that without building uh, infrastructure in, into those markets. If you want to go compete in Germany or France or UK or US and take your products to those countries, this infrastructure allows you to do that at rapid pace because you publish once, you can deploy anywhere into any one of those regional data centers. Uh, one thing I hear a lot is cloud compliance, security, privacy matters to me. What happens to my data? Is it secure? Is it safe? Yes. The question is, how do you manage your infrastructure today and how do you compare with something like this? We spend a billion dollars a year on security. We spend $10 billion a year on infrastructure on building the data centers. It's something that's very difficult to keep up with. And so we have bet the entire company, it's a $90 billion company today, Microsoft, on cloud. And so from a security perspective, one thing we focused on is making sure that we are ahead of the curve and actually influencing and driving the standards that exist around the world in countries, uh, working with governments, working with organizations and regulators to ensure that our cloud infrastructure meets the standards that are published and that we can ensure that you have access to. And so it gives you that peace of mind. I was talking to a customer yesterday. You know, they were saying, I have peace of mind with Microsoft, with our data centers. And you've got the ability to do that because we, we can prove to you our capabilities. The ISO 27001, everyone is aware of those. Over a thousand controls and measures that we have in our data center in our operations that you, know, that you can feel comfortable about how we operate. Second thing is data privacy. Uh, Germany has the, high, the highest 
level of data privacy standards in the world, and we meet those regulations. And so, and you'll see that in our contracts, and not just something we say, you can read it in our contract. Uh, the third thing is, um, from a, a regulator perspective, we actually worked with over 35, 40 regulators around the world in data privacy, banking regulators, to ensure that the cloud infrastructure meets the standards and expectations that they have to protect the citizens. At the end of the day, the regulator's job is to protect citizens. And what we've done is ensure that our infrastructure, our contracts, our controls, our measures uh, comply with every standard that we can find. As standards appear and as regulators um, enhance and update their regulations and guidance around cloud, we keep up. And so you've seen here, we were the first cloud vendor in the world to have ISO 27018, which is our first cloud privacy standard in the world, as an example. One of the things we recently published a few months ago was a book around the cloud for public good. From a Microsoft perspective, you know, this is not just a platform. We care deeply about organization success. We care deeply about citizens and consumers and what governments need for their, for their countries. And so from that perspective, uh, we have published a set of guidelines and policies that governments can adopt. Um, and this has been taken from the experience we've gained from working with, you know, over 50, over 100 countries around the world uh, who have built and um, helped their um, businesses, help the governments that they have to adopt cloud technology at the right pace to take advantage of those capabilities. And so we, we believe in a trusted cloud, and you've seen that from our compliance and the focus on security. It's a security first approach that we've taken across all of our cloud services. Uh, we want a responsible cloud, a cloud that cares and understands the needs of citizens and protects their data. And we also want to have an inclusive cloud that allows any type of organization to be able to adopt and deliver services by leveraging the cloud. So with that, I want to leave you with one more video before I pass over to Craig, who is going to focus on digital transformation and what that means and what that's doing for, for organizations. Uh, but here's, here's a great example of a startup uh, that built a cloud infrastructure-based application, is super successful, valued at over a billion dollars, in the last, and, but did not exist five years ago. Without the cloud, this would not have been possible for this organization to exist. Uh, we've been working with them and partnering with them on how they can en enhance security within their application for their users.